Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Family Sedan channel. I've got opinions and comments from several attorneys within the XRP community. Now, you may recall that recently, attorney John Deaton filed an amicus brief in the SEC v. Library case. And yes, Library already lost. That happened over a month ago. But now we're at the part where we're talking about remedies. And attorney Deaton filed an amicus brief to go ahead and chime in on that. And I covered that in its entirety in a recent video, so not going through that here. I just wanted to mention that to make sure everybody's caught up to speed. Well, uh, the <laughs> library uh, filed a new brief today, and uh, I'm sorry, not library, SEC responded uh, to uh, library's previous filing. And, and the SEC is, <laughs> I'll just tell you this at the outset of the video, and it's completely ridiculous and absurd, but the SEC is seeking over $22 million from library in terms of disgorgement and seeking penalties. It's and, and according to library, this is way beyond anything that they've ever taken in, but the SEC is asserting that uh, this is based on uh, the, the information they have, uh, what LBC was worth at the times that it was sold. Uh, they're insisting that's the case. I, I don't know. I'm just telling you what both sides are reporting there. It seems completely ridiculous. And if you compare it to that to what's happened in at least one previous case, as Library did, I'll highlight this shortly, um, there is no comparison. The, the, the degree to which the SEC is hammering Library is more intense. Uh, so uh, Attorney Hogan, by the way, and I also mentioned this at the outset of the video, uh, he, he does not think that the judge would any longer believe at this point based on what the SEC has reported here. There's, he just doesn't think that the judge would believe that the SEC's purpose is actually to protect anyone. And uh, the SEC did talk about Attorney John Deaton's amicus brief here. So I'll share with you what, what they said. It's ridiculous, as, as usual, right? Anybody surprised out there? But before going any further, I do want to be clear, I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I am not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say, right? I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. So I thought I'd share with you, start this video rather by sharing with you a comment from the official library account this morning, 7.30 a.m. Central Standard Time. And the, they wrote, We marked all of our LBC to zero dollars on our balance sheet because we are offering to the court to destroy or divest them. The SEC used this to argue we have a $3 million slush fund that we are hiding. Incompetent or evil? Question mark. Hmm. I'm going to go with evil. I'm going to, on this particular one, there are, there are certain levels of incompetency within, within the SEC, sure, but most of what they're doing is not a demonstration of incompetency in my estimation. They, they make mistakes, but it's, you know, most of the makes, mistakes that they make, I think that it's a result of them not being able to keep track of their illogical thought process and lies. I think that's what causes a lot of the incompetency, or, but, uh, you know, that's visible anyway. But most of it, I really do think it's just these people are just terrible creatures that nature accidentally created. I don't know how you done messed up that bad nature, but these humans exist. They really do. And they're absolutely the epitome of evil. And uh, then you have this from attorney James K. Filan, member of the XRP community. And uh, he shared the actual legal document. And there are a few parts that I did. You can hear I've got, uh, got some dead trees above my little moon family sedan fingers right here. Uh, so and I highlighted uh, and made a few notes there. But anyway, Attorney Filan said, In the library case, the SEC has filed its opposition to library's motion to limit the SEC's remedies. And so I will pause to note that even before this filing, library had told the SEC, look, we are willing to just close up shop, you know, go out of business, get rid of all of our remaining uh, L library credit tokens, and all of that, even just literally burning them and, and shutting down the company, that wasn't enough to get the SEC to say, okay, that's fine. No, 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 not even close. They want $22 million. <laughs> Check this out. Attorney Filan shared an opinion, and uh, I, I, I very much appreciate Attorney Filan. He mostly, um, in terms of engagement with the community, mostly he's, he's sharing the documents that have been filed in like the library case and the ripple case. Um, he's not that frequently sharing his personal opinion, but when he does, I take note and in this tweet, Oh, he certainly shared his perspective and he's not mincing words here. Check this out. Attorney Filan says, 
The SEC claims that a penalty equal to Library's full pecuniary gain of $22.1 million is fair and reasonable under the circumstances. The SEC doesn't want to regulate crypto. It wants to kill it in the United States. And then there's this from Fred Rispoli, another attorney within the XRP community. He retweeted what attorney Filan shared and attorney Rispoli wrote the following. XRP Army already knew this, but SEC Endgame is fully revealed by this filing. Number one, deliberately say nothing of third-party transactions and future secondary market transactions to preserve weaponized ambiguity and maximum prosecutorial discretion. And actually, let me pause to note there. Um, he's right in terms of they, there's certainly no clarity there. Um, in fact, they did argue, and I'll highlight it in this video, they actually argued that they it sh that the court shouldn't talk about it, and the SEC themselves, um, you know, they've 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 done what they need to do. It's completely absurd and offensive, but I highlighted that in here, and I'm going to share it with you. And then uh, Attorney Rispoli wrote number two: keep each enforcement action restricted to defendant sued, enabling ability to restrict the future transactions of that defendant, while also chilling secondary market without suing anyone else. The diabolical calculation is impressive, albeit evil. Well, it looks like a lot of us agree that uh, the SEC is not just full of ass hattery, but legitimately evil. Then there was this also from the library Twitter account. This morning, EOS paid a penalty of 0.5% of sales. The SEC is asking for 200% of library sales. Yes, 400 times more. The SEC absolutely does want to kill crypto, but in our case, they realize we're a threat to government control over social media. And so look, I'll just say this, in terms of the amount of money that they're asking, over $22 million, which by the way, doesn't even account for any penalty that the court may assign. And I, again, having read through this entire 16 page filing here, the SEC asserts that this is what library took in. Library says they didn't take that much in. I don't know what the reason is for the discrepancy. I'm going to try to find out, and I can talk about that if I find out in a future video. I just, I wish I had, I was scratching my head reading this though. I'm like, where is this coming from? The SEC is just insisting that that's the right figure. So again, well, I'll try and get to the bottom of it, but right now I'm just like, hmm? And then here's something from attorney Jeremy Hogan. He said, the SEC is amazing. It asks for an injunction against library for future sales. And on the next page, argues the court can't rule on future sales by Amici because they are too speculative. I think the judge is realizing about now that this was never about protecting anyone. Yeah, I'm going to highlight the specifics in just a minute or two here. I know I highlighted that. And it is indeed true. You know, the court is saying, hey, file an injunction so that library cannot conduct future sales with the S, uh, uh, with the LBC token. But then it's, it talks out the other side of its mouth here and uh, argues that the court should not rule on future sales having to do with LBC of Amici uh, because that's too speculative. So, yes, go ahead. For these, for these future sales, make a ruling. But for other future sales, even though we don't know what either of the sales might be, uh, don't make a ruling because that would be outside the confines of reasonable law, right? Oh, okay, thank you. And I'm sure it's all because reasons is, is usually the case. Um, and then attorney John Deaton responded to that and said, I wish I could have read this, this uh, before filing an amicus brief so I could address this stuff. Although that was impossible. Well, yeah, that would have been nice, but obviously not possible. And they responded to what attorney Deaton wrote here. And attorney Hogan responded to Deaton and said, there was some crazy stuff in here. Oh, yes, there is. And let's go ahead and break into this. And I just have highlighted a handful of parts here. Um, but uh, let's go ahead and dig into some of these specifics. Here we are on page one, filed by the SEC. I'm just going to start right here. I just want to read the top part. That's it on this page. Plaintiff Securities and Exchange Commission hereby opposes Defendant Library Inc.'s premature motion to limit the commission's remedies in this case. And I was pausing the reason that they filed that is because the SEC is like, we're literally giving you everything that we have, and you're saying that's not enough. That's why the why library 
uh, filed what they filed to the judge. And he, this is the response saying, yeah, but no, come on, we want even more than what you have. And they actually, I didn't highlight it for this for this video, but I read through, and the, the SEC, I'll just tell you this since I'm not going to read through it. The SEC did argue that, and they provided rationale for why um, they should be able to, you know, charge substantially more than what, uh, what library actually holds. And uh, then they write, uh, the remedies the commission seeks, including injunctive relief, disgorgement, and a civil penalty are all authorized and appropriate. Now I want to jump ahead to page six, and this is pretty much everything that I wanted to cover. Because um, the rest of it, it's a little bit too in the weeds and not it's not like the key points that I think you need as a takeaway for the video, uh, for the content that I'm covering in this video. And uh, let's go ahead and start at the top here, though. Uh, library's offer to burn its pre-mine is also unavailing. Let's just pause here. It, it, it may be the case, I hope not, it may be the case that the word pre-mine is adopted and maybe it ends up in the dictionary at some point. God, I hope not. Because it, you don't need the word pre-mine to exist. Just use the word create because when you say pre-mine, it makes people think that there's some sort of process similar to Bitcoin mining that created the, the coin. It's just, it, it makes no sense. But maybe it gets adopted and people just understand that it's the same thing as the word create. It's just applying to crypto. But it's, it, it's just like a pet peeve of mine. So I've got at least two pet peeves. One is my uh, my seven-year-old terrier mix, my, my little my little sweet pet peeve. And um, and uh, this is this is another one. The word pre-mine existing. <laughs> because when people, when, they, when it started, it was people not knowing what the hell they were talking about. Like I would see people talking about how Ripple pre-mined XRP, this or that. I'm like, you don't know what in the ever-loving hell you're talking about. And then just got adopted to mean this different thing, but... Whatever. If, if it happens, it happens. But, man, I just a little side bitch fest. All right, let's continue now. So, again, a library's offer to burn its pre-mine is also unavailing. Library does not need the specific LBC in its pre-mine to commit a future violation of Section 5. It could mine LBC or receive LBC from a third party and then, in turn, offer and sell them as an investment contract like it did before. It could reacquire the LBC securities it has sold and offer them again. So, folks, think about this. Effectively, the SEC must think that LBC, once a security, is a security forever. And this is one of the primary points I wanted to bring up as a takeaway for this. Even if, even if library purchases LBC and then they sell that back on the market, that, that, that according to the SEC, is breaking the law. So if they buy it, they're, what, they're just supposed to hold it forever. They can't do anything with it because reason. Like none of this makes any damn logical sense, obviously. But that's what they're saying right here. To what degree? Who is this harming? Who is being protected? It's just they, they, it's a market participant. There are tons of market participants. So it's okay for other entities to to mine and then, uh, but but at library they can't. And and somehow there's. I, okay. None of this makes sense. <laughs> this does not make sense. I'm just saying. Um, then go down to uh, right here. Uh, oh, right there. In this case, the SEC writes, in this case, the commission simply wants libraries illegal unregistered offering to stop. That was a pause to note. Uh, that's not all they want. They want to sue. They want to have... Uh, well, they already sued them into oblivion. They want to... Uh, remedy them into oblivion now by having severe penalties that seem, uh, from what I'm seeing, far beyond the scope of what would be reasonable, but it is what it is. So anyway, again, they say, in this case, the commission simply wants libraries' illegal unregistered offering to stop. It is not seeking, in this case, an order directing library to destroy securities or discontinue operations. Okay, so just pause the note here. Like, destroy securities? Just, just, just think about this, because they said again they're not they're not ordering library to destroy securities. What do you mean destroy securities? As in, the LBC token, the, the library credit token, is a security itself. And if and if uh, library gets gets rid of these burn the, the the existing LBC they hold, that itself is a security. Do you see what they wrote here? This is this is what I'm saying. Like, and this is why it's so damn offensive. The stuff that they're writing here. Um. It couldn't because there is no path forward. There is absolutely zero path forward. There is no clarity for participants outside of library who want to use the LBC uh, token for anything. 
period. It just is, it just is not the case. And then if you look at footnote one down here, it reads as follows. To the extent other persons are violating the securities laws, the commission also wants them to stop. But other misconduct, even that related to library or LBC, is not part of this case. Hold on. Do you see that footnote at the bottom of your screen there? What LBC misconduct? Sales on secondary markets? What are you talking about? The token itself? Can you imagine, can you imagine something like this in the Howie case? And they, they wrote here, okay, well, you know, obviously there's the library, you know, they, <laughs> our library is already defeated here. But uh, can you imagine just, just throw in Howie related things here? Throw out LBC and then throw in oranges. You know, <laughs> to get, imagine, to the extent other persons are violating the securities laws, the commission also wants them to stop. But other misconduct, even that related to oranges, is not part of this case. I just, I just traded, I just swapped the word out. I took LBC out and I threw an oranges. Does that, can you believe this? Do you see, just to illustrate the absurdity of all this, just oranges. So we don't want anyone else to break the law with oranges. What? Do you see how stupid this is? This is the dumbest crap. Holy hell. I don't, I, just, I don't even know what else to say. It's, it's like I'm laughing, but I understand it seriously, but I'm laughing because it's that absurd. I can't even help it. Uh, going down to page seven now, the asshats at the SEC write the following. In contrast, the commission is not seeking an order prohibiting all third parties from buying or selling LBC. The two proposed amicus briefs... Actually, let me say this first, actually. Because again, they say the commission is not seeking an order prohibiting all third parties from buying or selling LBC. So non-library transactions. Okay, then why not offer clarity about secondary market sales? Why are you so against that? Because you'll see as I go further, they literally tell the judge not to address this. They want the confusion for, thir for, uh, for third parties for secondary and for secondary markets. That's what they want. The assets continue. The two proposed amicus briefs filed with the court seek orders from the court outside the scope of the present case in controversy. They both focus on undefined secondary market sales and seek declaratory judgments about indeterminate future transactions involving anyone but library. With no, So they're talking about Attorney Deaton here, by the way, the amicus brief he filed, with no stake in the present litigation about what library should be enjoined from doing, their arguments quickly devolve into the theoretical. No, 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 no. Let me pause right there. No, specifics were provided. You are lying to the judge. And the judge knows that because the judge read or will read the amicus brief. No, <laughs> specifics absolutely were provided, including LBC held by Naomi Brockwell. Uh, and, and that's the individual that the amicus brief was written on behalf of because she's a content creator who has never bought or sold LBC, but she holds a bunch of it because she's earned it uh, through using the platform. And, and so think about this. They're talking about future transactions with LBC. Like they, under, they understand. They, of course they know where these transactions are occurring and they know how it's used. They know that it's on exchanges. They're, and, and then so like they were supposed to be, well, supposed to cite what? Every single exchange in the amicus brief where, where trading occurs currently? And it's so like they talk about future sales. Well, okay, yes, future sales, but not just future. You understand it's happening right this second. Every second of every day, there are uh, transactions and proposed transactions that can be completed. Just It's all occurring right now on exchanges the world over. LBC, it's happening right now. And they're talking about theoretical future transactions. No, bitch, it's happening right now, today, every single day, you idiots. What the hell? It's unbelievable. Uh, really grinds my gears, folks. I don't know if you can tell, but it's grinding my gears up good. The asshats continue. One concedes that any judicial analysis of future LBC tra transactions involving third parties must occur in the future. The court found that Library offered and sold more than 200 million LBC as investment contracts to others. The facts have not changed in the last month. Moreover, the court's analysis hinged on the economic realities of the transactions and the way in which Library made its offers and not on the subjective intent of any particular acquirer 
like amicus petitioner Miss Brockwell. Okay, so boss here. This is, again, that's Naomi Brockwell, and this that's the individual on which the amicus brief by Attorney Deaton was written. Uh, it was on behalf of her. Okay. So the ruling's the ruling about the specific basic scheme of what happened with library, which is BS as far as I'm concerned, but that came down. But what about this? Do you see how they're trying to like skate by and act as if that this is just a completely unrelated thing that we shouldn't even have to talk about, which makes no damn sense. And again, don't forget, as attorney Hogan pointed out, you know, don't let you don't want library to, to conduct these future transactions with with LBC. But then at the same time, uh, they're, 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 when it comes to, as they cite here, theoretical transactions for anybody uh, that's not library transacting LBC. No, 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 no. That's just theoretical stuff. We can't talk about that. But when it's library potentially doing something in the future, it's not theoretical. You see how that works? See how they're, they're just making crap up? It's so disingenuous. Talking out of both sides of their mouth couldn't be more obvious. And then they write... In its order, the court declined to address future offerings by a library. The court should likewise decline to entertain the amicus brief's arguments about future offerings by third parties. And so this is hard proof that the SEC does not want regulatory clarity and also wants to kill crypto in the United States, as Attorney, Attorney Filan stated. Firmly agree there. And again, they stated to wrap that up, the court declined to address future offers of library and the, and the court should decline to entertain, entertain amicus briefs arguments about future offerings by third parties. But the SEC, talking about the other side of their mouth, should entertain uh, it, 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 what the SEC has to say about future transactions, specifically with library. The logic breaks down. Is I don't know if this judge is an idiot. I don't, I don't think he's an idiot. I just think he's wrong the way he ruled here. But um, my gosh. If he, if he doesn't address secondary market, it's just a disservice to the investors that the SEC is supposed to protect, but will not protect, and it actually just seeks to harm. That's the truth of it. I, it's hard to believe this is real life. This, this is what we're talking about. All right. I'm done. I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the Moon Family Sedan. <laughs>